Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to show you how to make a cool procedural sand dune material. It's made all in the shader graph. There's no textures required. If you're new to my channel, hi! I make weekly game development tutorials, so subscribe and turn on notifications if that sounds up your alley. I also have a website, complete with a searchable list of tutorials, so check that out from the video description. I want to take a second to thank my next-gen patron, Leaf Enzo. Thank you so much for your support. I made this shader in Unity 2020.3 long-term support with Universal Render Pipeline 10.3.2. If you're using a newer version, check the video description for any fixes that you should know about. To get started, set up the Universal Render Pipeline in your project. Create a shaders folder and open it in your file explorer. Then make a new file named noise.hlsl and another named polygongradient.hlsl. Copy and paste the contents of these two files from the links in the video description. We'll use several custom functions in this graph, and these files contain the code. I've adapted the noise file from Totally Rania's code. Check out her tutorials, they're all great. Moving on, create a universal render pipeline lit shader graph called Sand Dunes. Set up a little test scene and create a material for the sand dune shader. Assign it to an object in your scene, then open the shader graph. This graph has many parts, but let's start by generating a dune height map, with which we can generate the albedo color and normal vector. Our base will be a simple sine wave. To make the input, create a UV node and multiply it with a UV scale float property. This will allow us to easily scale the entire pattern. Then split it to get the V component and multiply it with a sine frequency property. And tau, which is 2 pi. To test our work so far, feed this into the base color field of the master stack and save the asset. Now, it'll be useful to rotate the sine wave for extra control. Create a rotate UV node and insert it in between the UV scale multiplication and the split node. Set the rotation field to a sine rotation float property and the node's unit mode to your preferred angle units. I'll go with radians. Okay, let's introduce some noise to roughen things up. The noise.hlsl file has a great tileable Perlin noise function, so I'll use that. Although, you could certainly import a noise texture instead. Create a custom function node and set the type to file, the name to Perlin noise, and the source to noise.hlsl. Add five inputs, a vector2 value, a vector2 period, a float persistence, a float roughness, and a float octaves as well as one output of float out. Feed the scaled UVs into the value field and a new float distort noise scale property into the period field. The other noise inputs control the amount of detail in the output. I'm going to hard code some values in here, but you could add properties if you'd like. You'll notice that no matter what period you input into the node, the noise doesn't seem to scale. To fix this, multiply the UV by the period as well. Remap the noise output to range from 0 and 1 to negative 1 and 1. Now, to combine the sine wave and noise pattern, multiply both with their own float amplitude property. And add the products together. Looking at our work so far, it's looking good, but not so much like a sand dune. There's a neat trick to help out with that, but it's easier to show than explain. Route the combined wave and noise signal into a polygon node and create a float property for the polygon sides. Set the width and height to 1. This really does help the shape, but the edges are a bit too crisp. To fix this, we have to re-implement the polygon node, adding a smooth gradient to the output. 
That's where the polygon gradient.hlsl file comes into play. Create a custom function node, set the type to file, the name to polygon gradient, and the file to polygon gradient.hlsl. Then give it arguments and outputs to match the normal polygon node. Our polygon node only returns values for UVs between 0 and 1, so place a fraction node between it and the wave pattern. We can add more detail to it by tiling the UVs for just the polygon input. Create a tiling and offset node and feed the scaled UVs into it. As well as a UV tiling vector tube property. Add that to the fraction node input. With that, we've got a pretty good height map going. Let's add some color. Create a sand low color and a sand high color property. Create a blend node and set it to overwrite mode, then feed the low color, high color, and height map into it. That looks good, but everything's so smooth. We should add a sand grain effect. There's another type of noise, called Voronoi noise, which makes little diamond shapes. Once again, our noise.hlsl file has a tileable implementation, so create a custom function node. Set the type to file, the name to Voronoi noise, and the file to noise.hlsl. Give it a vector3 value and vector3 period input, and a float cell, float random, and float edge output. Create a grain period float property and feed it into the period field. Once again, multiply it with the scaled UV and then route that into the value field. The three outputs give slightly different results. The cell output has a gradient from the center of each grain to its edge, so we'll use that. Create another blend node in overwrite mode to blend the wave and grain signals. Set the opacity to a new grain color blend float property. Saturate the output and route it into the color blend node. That looks better, but I'd still like a little more detail. In the crevices of dunes, you can sometimes see a bit of the substrate ground peeking through. Let's simulate that. First, we need to find the troughs in the dune wave. Use a smooth step node, setting the maximum edge to a substrate dune height max float property. Do the same with the grain noise, using a substate grain height max float property. Feed both into a 1 minus node. And then multiply them together. This gives us a mask of the low points in both patterns. To further refine it, Route the mask through a power node with a substrate tightening float property. Then create another blend node in overwrite mode to blend the sand and substrate colors. Add a substrate color property. And that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's tackle the normal now. Feed the height map into a normal from height node, adjusting the strength as needed. Feed that output into a normal strength node with a normal strength float property. This goes directly into the fragment normal field of the master stack. While you're there, make sure that the fragment normal space is set to tangent space. And that's it. This normal is a little harsh for me. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to improve it using a much more complicated method. But let's move on for now. Some sand grains should catch the sun and shine. To start on that, we need to assign each grain a random normal vector. The random output of Voronoi noise 
gives a single random value for each grain. We can use that to construct a normal vector. Once again, the noise.hlsl file has a function to do that. Create a custom function node and set the type to file, the name to rand1d to 3d, and the file to noise.hlsl. This function takes one float, called value, and outputs a random vector 3, called out. Set value to the Voronoi noise random output, then remap it to range from 0 and 1 to negative 1 and 1. This is our random shine normal vector. These vectors should be biased towards the actual normal vector. To adjust the bias strength, multiply the random vector with a grain shine strength float property. Then add it to the normal vector. And normalize it. To compute whether this grain should shine or not, we need to see if the shine vector is parallel to the view direction. Get a view direction node, set it to tangent space, and normalize it. Then feed both vectors into a dot product node, which returns 1 if the vectors are parallel. Throw out all but the most parallel pairs using a smooth step node, with a shine threshold property set as the minimum edge. I'd also like shines to appear only near the top of dunes, so we can construct a mask similar to how we did with the substrate. Route the dune height map into a smooth step node with a dune shine height min property, set as the minimum edge. Multiply that with the shine value, and multiply that with a shine color property. Route that into the emission field of the master stack. I love this shine technique, it always looks great. Round out the graph with a smoothness float property. And the sand looks great. You could stop here, but if you'd like a normal vector, watch on. I'll warn you. This method makes the graph much more demanding. So if Unity starts to slow down, consider collapsing the node previews. First, select all nodes computing the dune height map between the scaling UVs up to and including the polygon node. Right click and convert them to a subgraph called sand pattern. Double click to enter it and clean things up, rearranging nodes, renaming properties, and setting up an output. return to the main graph, and clean up anything else that got misplaced. The normal from height node works by computing the height map's partial derivatives and calculating a normal vector from that. Unfortunately, we can't adjust the sample radius, which makes edges very sharp. We'll have to re-implement the node ourselves. This means we need to calculate the dune height for four positions around the center UV and calculate the differences in height for each pair. With the horizontal and vertical slopes, it's not difficult to compute a normal vector. Start the process by duplicating the sand pattern node four times, making sure that the inputs stay connected. Then define a normal sample radius float property and feed it into a negate node. Create four vector2 nodes and construct four cardinal offsets using the positive and negative sample offsets. Add each to the scaled UV
and route the sums each into a pattern node. Now, to compute the slopes, create two subtract nodes and subtract the right sample from the left and the top sample from the bottom. Divide each by two times the sample radius. Feed these ratios into a Vector3 node and set the Z component to 1. Normalize it and route it into the normal from strength node from before. You can delete the old normal from height node. Now, if that all seemed like mathematical magic, I'll link a more in-depth explanation in the video description. I knew my calculus class would come in handy someday. I could continue tweaking this graph forever, but I better stop. I am really happy with the result. Who knew the polygon node could make this kind of shape? I'd love to see your uses of this graph. Please tag me in any social media if you create something with it. Now, this procedural material is pretty complicated. It's good for prototyping, but in a final game, you should consider baking it into a texture, or at least using a tileable noise texture instead of custom function nodes. Would you be interested in a tutorial about baking shader graphs into textures? Let me know in the comments about that or any other ideas you have. Thanks so much for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video. It encourages YouTube to recommend it, and it really helps me out. I also want to take a second to plug my Patreon page. Don't feel pressured, you're watching this video helps me a great deal as it is, but if you'd like to contribute, I have prepared some perks. These include early access to videos, tutorial topic polls, downloadable project files, and more. Thank you patrons for all your support, and once again, thank you Lee Finzo. Thanks again everybody for watching, and make games.